Hi, everyone. It's Rob Gray from ASU and the Perception Action Podcast, back with another article review. In this one, what I want to do is look at information for learning and how we could potentially augment that and help a learner find a better movement solution by changing the equipment we use. So this falls under the kind of the scope of what we call the ecological approach direct learning, which I've discussed before on the podcast, and I've created this resource page on my website, uh, which you can find there. The idea is that when we're learning a task and we're learning a new movement solution, there's basically three things we can do. We can change the information we use. We can change the movement, the control laws, what we intend to, to the, the kind of that part of the movement we intend to change. And then we can also change our calibration between the information and the movement. Kind of these are the three ways, education of attention, education of intention, and calibration are kind of the three mechanisms for learning under the direct learning approach. Also within, within this idea, which is, of course, Jacobs and Michael's theory, is that there's information for learning, you know, um, that gives us information about how we're proceeding, how our search for a new solution is going, right? Are we heading in the right direction? So it's not telling us about our performance so much as it's telling us about our search. And as I mentioned before, I think this is very analogous to Newell's idea of transition feedback, right? It's telling you about whether your search is headed in the right direction. So within, you know, using the constraints-led approach and using the ecological approach, I think there's different ways that we can, we can augment this information to help a learner find a new solution more easily. And a good example is one that I already talked about in the article of the review, one of the very first ones I did in 2021, looking at this really nice study by Tim Buzzard and colleagues showing that, you know, when you give a, a child a scale, properly scaled racket, so a racket that's smaller and use lower compression balls, it serves a lot of purposes. They learn faster, they move better. But a point that I made in that review, and they, they emphasize it also changes the information for learning. And it, this is really illustrated in this uh, graph right here. This is showing, you know, the performance when you hit a ball solidly versus you miss hit it, right? And the important point here is that there's really no difference for a full-size racket, whereas for the scaled racket, there's a huge difference in the information you get. That's what you want, right? What you want to get feedback that tells you whether you did it well or did it poorly, right? So that's this is going to be, you know, we want this large difference in the feedback you get um, when you, uh, depending on what the outcome is, right? That's going to be information for learning and help guide the search. And Building on that and kind of going to the study I'm going to talk about today, um, I actually did some work uh, quite a few years ago now, 2009, showing the importance of kind of tactile feedback, right? The forced feedback you get. And in particular, I was looking at baseball. And what I did was recreate in my virtual environment, I recreated the tactile feedback you get when you, you swing a bat by adding these tactors that kind of vibrated at different locations on the bat. And what I would do is um, either do it in the correct location. So if you hit it on the sweet spot, this one would vibrate or the wrong location. And what I found is you could systematically change how the, the person explored the swing, right? So if you offset the, the tactile information, it would cause them to swing a bit later. They'd have a bigger offset in their swing. So they were using this tactile feedback they were getting from the swing to help explore and adapt and, and recalibrate their swing. So this feedback, you know, we get is not just visual, right? It, there's also tactile and force feedback that we get is really important for learning, information for learning. So this study was looking at uh, hitting in baseball also, and particularly looking at the force you get and the, the, the vibration you get from hitting a ball. In particular, they were focused on hitting a ball off a tee. And this is by Yang and colleagues, a public just, just this year. And what the problem they were concerned with is that when you hit a regulation ball off a tee, along with its other problems, right, its main problem is it's decoupled, right, from the information, is you do not get a really accurate representation of the force and the tactile information you get when you really hit a real baseball. It's way, way less, right? So it doesn't really prepare a uh, batter well for bracing to absorb those forces and to use those forces as feedback, for example. So what they wanted to look at is that can this be improved by using a weighted baseball? So what they did would have was have 12 baseball players from the University of Taipei. They hit in three conditions, uh, hitting a regulation baseball off a tee, hitting a weighted baseball that was two and a half times heavier off a tee, 
So the ball was exactly the same size. Its core was just changed to make it heavier. And then they also hit a, a regulation baseball pitched at 45 miles an hour. So one of the limitations that they really strongly recognize is that's a really slow speed, obviously, for hitting a baseball. But what they wanted to do was compare the forces that you get when you um, do these three things. And so what they used was uh, they had this kind of setup hitting off this tee. They, they had a high-speed camera to measure your swing, the velocity. They had accelerometers and markers on the, the person's body. They had EMG so they can measure the forces and muscle activity, et cetera. So they had these three conditions, regulation baseball, weighted baseball, and then a piss, pitch baseball. And they looked at these different uh, effects. And what they found was uh, that when you look at these three conditions, there's no difference in the actual swing velocity. So the person swings in the same way. So the movement's the same. But there's a very large difference in the actual uh, forces and, and feedback you're getting, the information you're getting. So there's different, this is showing the acceleration, the vibration at the wrist. What you can see as, as similar to, we talked about before, that for a regulation ball off a tee, it's way lower than either hitting a weighted ball or a pitch ball, right? And importantly, it looks like the weighted ball and pitch ball are no different, okay? So when you hit a regular ball off a tee, you're getting much less vibration, right? So the information you're getting is much weaker, and it's not you're not having to absorb and brace for the forces like you would normally get. The other thing they looked at was um, look at the activation of muscles and co-contraction. So they looked at wrist activity, uh, flexor and extension, and they get pretty much the same story. What you can see is, in particular, at the point of contact, you get this very large difference between the regulation ball on the tee and either the weighted ball on the tee or the pitch ball, right? So you're getting much different forces, weaker, right? So it's probably going to get less information. And it's also not as representative of what you're, the forces you're actually going to have to deal with when you hit a real ball. So from this, they conclude that using a weighted ball on a tee gives more uh, feedback, more comparable, and information more comparable to what actually happens when you hit a real ball. Um, so they argue that, you know, as if you're going to hit off a tee, it would be much better to use a weighted ball because you're going to get more of these inputs that are much more representative of what you actually get in real baseball, right? So I think it's a really clean, basic study, right? I think it, it, it addresses an interesting question, um, and, and it was very well done. Um, you know, that obviously the speed is is a limitation, but they but they recognize that. But what I want to talk about is kind of where we might go from here, right? You know, I think this is an interesting finding in a in a basic way, but I think we can take this a step further. For me, what's what's more important more important here than than the ab so what they're looking at is the absolute forces and the absolute vibration, um, showing that you get them closer to the same value when you use the weighted ball, right? But again, what that that's okay. Like that's important for learning to absorb those forces and deal with them. But I think for learning, again, if we want information for learning, what that that is, we need it to the variance in the information is more important than the absolute value, right? So does the information change, the feedback you get, the vibration, the forces change when you miss hit the ball versus hitting on the sweet spot? Is that range that you get, right? as big as you get with a pitch ball, or we can even make it bigger, that would be even better, right? To help you find a solution, right? So what we wanna know is how these, inf these information sources, vibration and force change as a function of your movement solution and the outcome. We're not so much just, gonna, but, uh, just the absolute value, right? Um, obviously, so, so I think that's a really important point for, for learning. Obviously, you know, I, I mean, you can anticipate I'm going to say, you know, I'd rather just skip the T altogether than using a weighted ball on a T and go to a more coupled action. And I think a good um, example of this is is um, with driveline, right? Um, hitting a, a plyo care balls. So they have a great blog post you can find here where they look at um, looking at showing you hitting. In this case, they were just tossing it to the batter. So plyo care balls are weighted balls. So you can have different, you can see they range 450 grams, 1,000, 100. Um, they're rubber coated balls that are filled with a sand like material. And why I like these is because they're going to give you that variation of feedback similar to the tennis study I talked about at the start. If you swing and hit one of these balls and you miss hit it, the feel you're going to get is going to be totally different than you hit if you hit it perfectly square, right? That's information for learning, right? That's going to allow you 
to know whether your movement solution is, is headed in the right direction, whether you're making the right adjustments, right? So I think the, the weighted ball and the T is kind of a nice first step in terms of getting the al absolute values right. But I think taking a, in a, this using plyo care balls is a way to take it a step further, right? But both of these for me illustrate how using weighted equipment can not only uh, serve as a constraint to make a person change their solution, it also can augment the information for learning to help you find a solution, which I think is, is really, really important. So that's all I wanna talk about today. Um, if you're interested in finding out more about the podcast, please check out perceptionaction.com. And if you're interested in supporting it, I would be all the things that I do, the video and the podcast, I'd greatly appreciate it. I have a bunch of different bonus materials all the way up to one-on-one -on -one, uh, mentoring if you're interested. So thanks for joining me and keep them coupled.